Welcome back to the Fusion 360 Tutorials. In this episode, we're going to learn how to edit sketches, edit features, and adding placed features. I have on the screen now the previous model that we've been working on, and we're going to go through and edit our sketches first. In our menu browser over here, we can expand our bodies and our sketches and we can see that we have two sketches done so far so we did the base part and then we did that chamfer that was over here if we want to edit any of those sketches we can right click on the sketch that we want and select edit sketch and that will bring us up to our sketch the other option is to use the timeline down here and you can see these squares if we highlight over them they're not filled in it says sketch one if i pop over to that it says sketch two and these are my two features so i have my extrude one and i have my extrude two if i want to edit one of these sketches i can double click on that and once again that will pull up that sketch and we can double click on any of these dimensions to edit it so if i want to change this to four inches i can double click that select four and that is done and then we can finish our sketch if we want to edit our features this extrude one we can double click on this and that will bring up our extrude dialog box so we extruded this to 0.5 so we can make those changes in here so i could change that to one if i wanted select ok and our feature is modified so that's how we go in to edit our sketches and our features. We can also rename these. If I wanted to rename this sketch one, I can click on this two times, slow clicks, and name this a sketch. And we can use that as a tool to uh, organize and help us navigate through our sketches. So if I went back down to this sketch down here, you will see it is called the base sketch if I hover over that. Another option for renaming our sketches or feature is using the timeline. So we could right click on here, we could select that at sketch, or we could also hit rename, S same as the features, right click, rename, and we could change that name to base extrusion if we wanted, and hit enter and now that is renamed so when i hover over that that is our base extrusion and remember we can always drag our timeline back all the way back to the beginning there and it will display what we have done at that point dragging that again and i will drag that right to the end so now we know how to edit sketches edit features and rename uh, the features and sketches in our browser now, if you recall from our previous video, I mentioned that we want to keep our sketch entities to a minimum. We don't want our sketches complicated because we need to constrain our sketches and we can take advantage of some of the placed features that are available in Fusion 360. And just as a reminder, you can see that the base sketch here and the sketch too, they have that little red lock padlock icon on there that tells you that those sketches are constrained so remember we always want to make sure our sketches are constrained you will not see that icon there if it is not constrained so you might want to go back in and make sure your sketches are constrained very important so using the base features we will cover a few in this uh, video uh, we have up under the create menu we have the whole command where we don't actually have to sketch our circles like we did on the previous video so we can use the whole command there's some additional ones that are under the create menu we will get into those some of those in later videos and under the modify menu we do have the fillet command which is a very common uh, commonly used uh, feature and we can expand that and we also have the chamfer there are additional modifications we can make but those are the ones we're going to cover in this video let's start with the placed hole feature placed hole feature is great for adding holes very simply without creating sketches as well as adding multiple holes of the same size without adding all the 
constraints in a sketch, adding all the equal constraints, etc. So if we go up and select the whole feature, and a dialog box is going to pop up here, and there's lots of options in there. First thing we must do is select a surface or a plane for the hole to be placed on. So we're going to select this top surface there. As soon as we place, place select that surface, our dialog box expands a bit and we can start selecting our references. We don't have to go select here already. It says our face one selected, so we want to move on to the reference first reference. And I'm going to select this edge here and I'm going to put a value of two in there. Can modify these after. And for a second reference, I'm going to select this edge here and I'm going to put a value in there of one. And you can see by my dialog box over there, reference one selected, two inches, reference one is selected with a distance of one inch. Now we do have to select our diameter still uh, right now. Um, it is also have to select our depth as well as the diameter. Um, so for under our shape settings, we have lots of different hole types, tapped holes, counter sinks, counter bores, and we can add all these variables on here. With our distance here, we just want to select, in this case, we're not going to put a value in there. We're going to put, we could select two and then select the bottom surface and say we want to go to that surface. Um, we're not going to put a distance in there, or we could select two or through all. So when we select through all, uh, now we have our hole. You can see that it just goes right through the bottom there all the way through and go back to our default view there and we need to select our diameter now. So you can see in our dialog box over here we have selected through all. Uh, we don't really have to select the the uh, the, the angle of the uh, points here and we can select the diameter here and I'm going to put in just a random diameter of 2.5 and select OK and that is our hole that is now placed in there so we can see that through so we didn't have to do any sketches on that and if we want to edit that we can double click on there and bring up those items and if I wanted to change this dimension to 1.25 select enter and we are done. So very easy to edit, very easy to create. A second option for creating multiple holes of the same diameter, we're going to need to create a sketch and we're going to create points in that sketch. And when we go through the use the hole feature, we will just select those points, it makes it very easy for creating multiple holes with the same size diameter. So I'm going to go up to my create sketch. I'm going to select this surface and I'm going to add some points in here so that I can select them using my hole feature and I'm going to create point. I could actually draw circles if I wanted to, but then it would look unconstrained. So I'm going to add my three points there. You can see the three white dots and I do have to constrain that sketch. So I'm going to add some dimensions onto there. And I just need to add my vertical dimension and these these points will be fully constrained. And I need to add some additional constraints on there to make these horizontal in line. So if we remember our horizontal vertical constraints, that will line those up horizontally. So we have our three holes there and you will notice there is some different spacing in there. So this is fully constrained. The holes are solid black. Now it tells you they are fully constrained. And if we go look at our last sketch we created, it says sketch five and you'll see the red, the red uh, lock there that indicates that they are, that that sketch is fully constrained. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to go up to our whole feature again, place whole feature and Instead of using a single hole, we're going to use from sketch. So as soon as we select sketch, it's going to ask us to sketch, select our points. So we can select our three points and I'm going to change my, make a smaller diameter hole, 316. So those aren't overlapping and we are going to go through all as well for this and select 
Okay. And our three holes are created. So a great tool to create multiple holes with the same diameter. One other option on creating a, a hole is for creating concentric circles. So I will go through the radius command first, and then we'll show how to use a hole command using a concentric hole. That means holes with the same center. So if I wanted to add a radius onto this corner here, I could have done that in this sketch, but we typically like to save all the smaller features to the end, like radiuses, holes, chamfers, all the finer details, we try and keep those to the end. That way we are not referencing smaller details that may change throughout the design. So selecting the radius or the fillet command, and I'm going to select that edge. I could select multiple edges. I could select all of these edges if I wanted, and I'm going to put my radius in here of, let's try one, and make that a bit smaller, 0.75. Select OK, and there we've quickly created uh, a nice fillet in there, which was much easier than creating that in your sketch. In your sketch, you would have had to add the, uh, draw the, the profiles, add constraints, much easier to use those uh, the fillet feature out there as, as opposed to sketching it. Now we're going to use our placed hole feature again using just the surface and that existing radius. So we're going to select our surface first. So we'll select that surface. And as a reference, we're going to select that radius. It picks that up as a radius. And all we have to do now is add our other attributes in there. We'll select through all and I will put this as a 0.5 inch diameter. And if we look at that, it is concentric, which means the center of this hole is the center of that hole. So a nice feature, nice addition or nice uh, tool when you're using the placed features hole command. In the last place feature we're going to demonstrate in this video is the chamfer. So the chamfer command is going to get rid of these sharp corners by replacing it with a flat surface that mates with those other two surfaces. So we're going to go to modify, select the chamfer command, and a dialog box pops up, and we're going to select these four edges on here where we want that chamfer placed. And this is an outside um, corner, so the chamfer is actually going to remove material and place a surface in there. And on the inside corners, it actually has to add material. But Fusion 360 detects that automatically. So I've selected my four edges, and I'm going to go put my value in here. I'll put a value of 0.125 and select OK. And you can see that that has added those four chamfers in there. And lastly, you can see down in the timeline these added features that we put in there. And if we need to edit any of those, double click on there and we can make those changes. Thanks for watching. Follow along with the next tutorials.